bad news for you today. What can you do about this? Hey folks, Dr. Mike here with Renaissance Periodization, and today's video is telling you something a little bit depressing, but for a good reason, so it can be more of a realistic approach for you and actually make you happier in the end. It is to try to get you to plan to gain less and less muscle with each progressive muscle gain phase that you do through your hypertrophy career. What? Why would we try to gain less muscle? Sounds defeatist. Sounds pessimistic. Aha, uh -huh. but I think it's realistic. Here's the deal. When you first start to gain muscle, when you first start training, muscle gains are rapid for almost everyone. Noob gains, we've got videos about that as well if you uh, wanna peruse the internet. If you just do sort of your own thing for like a year or two, and then you start to maybe tune into our channel, many others like it, and you learn some sports science, you can actually keep those noobs gain basically going for like another one or two years. For a few years, you can make essentially linear gains, and that spoils you, because then you kind of assume, based on seemingly good evidence from your own experience thus far, that you're just gonna keep making linear gains forever. But gains must slow down. In the end, gains are asymptotic. They approach a not very easy to define, but understandable theoretically line and get ever closer to it without coming all the way up to it. Why? Why, lifting gods, you may rage during a thunderstorm. Don't do it outside on a mountain or you will get struck with lightning. Also, random insight. If you guys are on the Netflix, there is a television show from Norway called Ragnarok. They say it differently. It's like Ragnarok or some shit like that. They say it better than us. They're the elven peoples. And it's fucking sweet. And then that guy standing on, uh, he's like, I'm not going to spoil it, but. The gods are involved. Anyway, go watch that show. But before you do, tune in real quick. Here we go. Why do gains slow down over time? Why inevitably, after at least a few years of training, we start to gain a little bit slower and a little bit slower and a little bit slower over time? Here's the deal. First, you are trying to fix repair after training damage and feed with ever bigger muscles but an ever roughly the same capacity with which to do it, which means what? Your gastrointestinal tract and your general power of your circulatory system is roughly the same, but your muscles are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's like trying to haul a heavier and heavier load with the same engine, or more accurately, trying to clean an ever-expanding house with the same cleaner person. You got a cleaner girl that comes to your house and cleans your house, three bedrooms. You used to do a tech startup and you get $110 million as a buyout and you add two more bedrooms. It's going to take her longer to clean the house. Then you're like, you know what? I'm not really living up to my new tech money. You get an indoor pool and a tennis court, also indoors, and a um, flight hanger for your vertical takeoff modified SR-71 Blackbird because you've seen the, you know, X-Men a few too many times. Uh, you know, I don't know if that cleaning lady is qualified to clean a Blackbird, but if she is, hey, that's going to take her a whole lot more. So there, as your muscles get bigger, the rest of your body systems designed to fix them and feed them do scale up somewhat, but probably not as fast. Probably not as fast as they otherwise would. That results in slower gains. Next. Next reason that you don't gain as fast after a while. Your muscle fibers are cells, and as they grow, their volume increases, right? How much literal geometrical volume they have goes up. That's all the muscle fibers in there and all the stuff that the nutrients have to fix and everything like that. But the way you absorb nutrients and hormones and a variety of other things, and the way you expel wastes, only happens through dedicated, often, gated channels and receptors that lie on the cell surface. And the surface of a muscle cell increases at a certain rate that is lower than the volume. 
It's the same reason why elephants can't jump around and move like ants. The volume of any given system, like a sphere, increases when that sphere grows much faster than the surface area. And so if you're trying to get a lot of nutrients to a muscle, as it grows, its volume goes up a ton, but its surface area relatively only a little. And that means the delivery systems that are on that cell surface that take the food and from outside the muscle and put it into the muscle, they can't keep up and they slow down relative to how much volume you really need. Think about it this way. This is going to be a shit analogy, but here we go. You have three bridges into an island city. The island city has a million people living in it, but the economy is good, relatively free markets with a liberal government, huh? Huh? and the city starts to expand vertically because it's an island. Usually the buildings are one or two stories, but after a couple decades, there are three or four stories, five or six stories, and then a bunch of skyscrapers. You got three bridges going in. Fucking hell. Every building is 10 stories. You could have 10 times the number of people, 10 times the number of goods and services to bring in, 10 times the number of commuters. Man, those three bridges aren't real deep shit. Traffic jams, shortages, you name it. You can absolutely build more bridges. But the place to build bridges, there may be 10 more points to build bridges. But if the average skyscraper height is, you know, some Singapore type shit, 100 stories, You've multiplied your population by 100, but your bridge transport throughput by 10. Oh, 10 way better than fucking three used to be, but multiplying by 100, you just can't keep up. That absolutely happens in every kind of cell in the body, specifically muscle cells. Problem. Number three, there is a term related to this called the myonuclear domain ceiling. If you think about a cell as having a nucleus and a few other organelles that help operate and upkeep every part of the cell, including its cell surface, as the cell grows in size, that cell surface gets really far away. And all of a sudden, the nucleus and all the structures designed to maintain and upkeep and grow and repair the cell are trying to, they're reaching really far to do their tasks. And at some point they can't reach anymore then your body kind of knows this through evolution, so it will stop making your cells bigger past a certain size, or at the very least, really slow down their expansion, which is bullshit because you don't get as jacked as you could have. But it's great because it keeps all of your muscles functional and actually attached to other, your cells are attached to each other, everything is going great, they're healthy cells, they work really well, because that nucleus can't get overpowered. Probably a very good analogy to this is if you have a city it has one fire department, one sheriff's department, one hospital in the city center, a little town. And it grows out and out and out, great economic conditions. It used to be a city with like five square miles, and now it's a city with 25 square miles. But one fire department, one hospital, one sheriff's department. Here's the thing. How the fuck does one sheriff's department service a city that's five times bigger? And even... If you had a situation where you, the sheriff's department got a new building, new headquarters, they hired five times the number of deputies or whoever in the sheriff, people shoot people that are bad criminals. If you call the police from way on the outskirts of the city, back when the city's small, yeah, two minutes later, they're there shooting criminals on site. Turns out your cat was up a tree and they just shoot you. They're like, hey, you, bam, and you're dead. But at least they got there fast. If the city's 10 times the size, you could have a guy pointing a gun at your face and you're like, yes, yes, sheriff's department, I'll hold. Yes, there's a man threatening to kill me. 30 minutes? Yeah, I can wait. Okay, see you guys when you get here. Go ahead and just shoot me, motherfucker. They ain't never getting here. Because not only are their shit 30 minutes away, but there's 25 other people making the same call at the same time. Cell signaling, cell messaging works in a very similar way. And your nucleus and all the redundant structures they just don't have infinite reach. There is not really too many circumstances of functional body cells that are still one cell 
that are like the size of a whole fucking organ. I mean, your muscle is composed of tons of cells, millions and millions and millions. It's not just one cell. Now, this is the thing is like one cell in a muscle, one fiber absolutely has basically the same contractile properties as a whole muscle. But why don't your cell just grows? Because cells have a myonuclear domain. The domain that the nucleus can control in a muscle cell, myonuclear domain, has a ceiling. It has a top end. Remember the city that just gets 10 miles big? And you're like, look, uh, the city of Isretelberg is as big as it's going to get. We need to have different municipalities, the adjoining city, people who live over there far enough. You live in Scott the Video Guysville, a derelict place full of degenerates, just projects, shootings. But in any case, it just has to be a different place. With its own police department, whatever, they probably wouldn't even have one. Uh, just everyone's a gun owner because Scott the Video Guy's a gun nut. Now you know that. And that's just what it's going to be because it's just too far away to deal with, right? That's the case, which means that any one given muscle cell that you have will only grow so big. When it grows to its maximum size, any further growth stimulus causes these dormant, mini, pathetic, half-born, weird baby cells next to your cells called satellite cells. The scientist hits the fucking button, and it's like, awake, child muscle. And he's like, ah, you know, like a little baby velociraptor, like, ah, and he can already bite your finger. They get to mega normal size, and then they reach their myonuclear domain ceiling after some number of months or years of growth. And then if they run out, another satellite cell is called in. But that process has limits too. You can't just make new satellite cells all the time. That process has its own asymptote. So not only do you run out of room in your city to get treat people with medical care, et cetera, but you run out of city building resources and you just don't, there's just not that many people anymore, Right? If we all get so rich that we each have 400 miles square of land to ourselves and the human population on Earth stabilizes, you know, beyond some kind of wacky, insane technology that's almost certainly going to be coming, nobody's coming to help you if you get sick. You have to drive 20 fucking miles to the next hospital just because you're so far away. And the body has those limits. So not only does the myonuclear domain ceiling become a problem, the satellite cell solution also has limits as well. That means... Your body resists muscle growth more and more and more. Or you can stimulate muscle growth. You get sore and everything. And that stimulus hits the nucleus and the nucleus is like, nope, can't grow anymore. Fuck you. You get sore, you heal, you get sore, you heal, you get sore, you heal, you're eating that whole time and dick all is happening. You just stay the same size. Tragic. And pretty much exactly the position that I'm in now at my career at age 38. But very predictable. Point number four. There is a ratio problem with receptors and hormones. As your muscles get really big, potentially they get lots more receptors for androgen hormones. The myonuclear uh, satellite cells that kind of come from newborn status and evolve into real cells themselves, their nuclei turn on. Those nuclei have androgen receptors for like testosterone. And there's now tons of them. But small problem, your balls testes to be specific, they only produce a certain amount of testosterone. If you get twice your size of muscle, your muscles are now on average exposed to half of the testosterone that they normally would be. That fucking blows. That means that all other things being equal. Now, your body has a variety of compensatory mechanisms. Testosterone is actually, you know, can hit up a, a, is, is more than enough of it to grow a ton of muscle in there. But it is nonetheless a small reason why you can't keep getting as big as you wanted forever. Because your balls are the same size and your muscles are twice as big, that's a small amount of ball to service a bigger amount of muscle. One of the reasons why people sometimes choose to take anabolic steroids is because, well, shit, we just produce more hormone that way. You produce, I mean, inject directly, and then voila, your muscles are right as rain again. You're a noob all over again. That process also has limits of its own. But another thing, just as a side tangent, if you start using anabolic drugs in your first couple of years of training, you're a fucking special kind of idiot because your own balls would have hooked you up with all that growth anyway. If you wait until you are an adult over the age of 25 in a country which is legal, not competing in a sport organization which bans the use of these substances, and while doing it under medical supervision, if you're already pretty fucking jacked naturally, your body's so fucking ready for that shit that then it'll make much more sense to do stuff like that. So just as a side tangent, this doesn't only apply 
to your testes. Your pituitary doesn't fucking grow. Growth hormone's still the same. Tons of other mo molecules that help you grow, including even estrogen, roughly get produced in the same amounts. As your muscles grow, they need more, but there's not more around. A very good analogy here is like, you have a town that's growing, but a fire department is just four dudes and one of them is always drunk. That's what you're going to get. Two fires a day, the boys will handle it. Seven fires a day, eh, somebody going to die. Number five, very real world type shit. Another limiter to muscle growth is that systemic from fatigue from your training starts to grow. If you want bigger legs and you're small, squatting up to 225 pounds for reps and 225 pounds of load through your spine and load for the rest of your system to recover from over multiple days will do the trick. If you are much more jacked, that's five plates on the bar, 495 pounds of spinal load and load through the whole system because you're still made of the same stuff. Like if you got twice as strong and the very character of your bones, the composition of your bones went from like regular bones to like triceratops bones or adamantium or some shit, hey, that would be a level up. Like as our society has grown, for example, we went from dirt roads when it's not a long distance to travel to like really well-paved superhighways. The very thing that makes the road is different. When you go from squatting 225 to 495, this still fucking, you're still a fucking human being as much as it pains me to say this. Now, your bone density absolutely goes up, but the fatigue is asymmetrically higher. It's asymptotically higher. Sorry, good God. Uh, exponentially higher. And it's just still going to hit you harder. The way you know that in the real world is you used to do 225 for reps. And afterwards, you're like, oh, I'm tired. Let's go to the buffet. You eat, you relax, you sleep two to three days, maybe not straight. And then you're like, oh, I'm healed. This is great. You squat 495 for reps. You're going to be fucking done, exhausted. You may not be able to come back Monday, Wednesday, Friday to do the same. You may only be able to hit up the same workout sets and reps wise, not load, Monday, Thursday. You lost an entire frequency of training for the week. And if you're like, well, I still want high frequency, you have to re reduce the number of sets and reps or total volume. No surprise that you're growing less. You just can't recover as well because there's more to recover from and you are still, and as much as it pains me to admit this, a human. So you have a few choices. One, remain human. Two, um, get upgraded slowly over the next 20 years to Android status, which is my uh, ideal. Or three, wander into one of those like basement raves where there's clearly vampire activity going on. If you need an exact visual reference, Blade 2, which is I consider a classic in cinema, you know that vampire scene with this weird techno music playing and the, the vampires are like, sexually eating each other or whatever and just pick like the first goth ho vampire and be like, bitch, bite me up. I'm trying to get jacked. And then it turns like the vampire strain she gives you doesn't make you jacked. It makes you more uh, immortal and just pale as fuck and skinny like Twilight. Yeah, joke's on you, bitch. Uh, but you could be a jacked vampire. That's another way to go. All right. Point number six. Your muscle cells, your DNA has internal governors, limiters on how big you can get. One of them is the chemical slash pathway known as myostatin. Myo means muscle, statin means stop or block. Myostatin stops and blocks muscle growth in a dose-dependent manner. The bigger you get, the more myostatin you produce. Why? What a fucking tragedy. Can't we just get bigger forever? Uh -huh. We could turn off or turn down myostatin. That would be cool. However, your body has these mechanisms for a reason. If you want to Google Belgian blue cow, Scott the Video Guy, if you can throw up a picture of that, that would be great. Um, it is an unbelievably jacked cow. You've never seen anything like it unless you've seen it before. It's got it's the only cow with visible triceps striated and hanging off the fucking boat. Those cows, the Belgian blues, have a deformity in the myostatin gene, and it makes the myostatin come out broken. So it doesn't do anything. The cow is jacked out of its fucking mind. However, those cows are known to be not as strong as regular cows, even of a smaller size. And their muscles have all sort of um, deformities, for lack of a better term. Their contractile properties is weird. They cramp more. It's just that if your muscles get past a certain point, 
cell by cell by cell, they start to malfunction more. Your body designed you in the real evolutionary landscape of functional muscle. It doesn't want you to just be jacked for no reason, even though that's what we're doing now with our time. The entire existence of this channel is predicated upon it. So your body is going to turn down muscle growth if you get too big by ramping up myostatin production. That's a real thing and absolutely explains one of the big reasons. It is a huge part of what is known as your genetic ceiling, natural or not. Myostatin and folostatin and a bunch of other chemicals like it make sure to keep your muscle growth hemmed in so that you don't just like grow muscle until you pop or more realistically grow muscle until you're a giant, useless, muscle-bound piece of shit that can't do anything in the real world. She was, seems like it describes a lot of us. In any case, that's one reason why you stop growing so much. Lastly, and this is a bit of a minor point, but nonetheless annoying and very real world, your range of motion starts to reduce as you get bigger. And range of motion, especially at the deep stretch position, is a very big potentiator of muscle growth. So for example, for myself, I can't physically extend my triceps more than what I'm showing you now. If you're watching this and if you're listening, just pretend I'm trying to do a tricep extension because my bicep is physically in the way. Everyone has this problem to some extent. But if you think about someone like Nick Walker, and you look at him lifting and you're like, that's partial range. And then you think about it, you're like, no, that's full range for him. He can't go any higher. There's physically something in the way. So if he wants some stretch mediated tricep growth, he's kind of shit out of luck. And to some extent, much smaller extent, because my arms are way smaller, so am I. And the rest of you, as you get bigger, your range of motion in some exercises, not all, gets smaller. It's annoying. It's definitely a thing. It's a minor thing, but I figured I'd mention it as well. All right. So... That all kind of blows dicks. Sorry, bad news for you today. What can you do about this? What do you get when PhD sports scientists collaborate with pro bodybuilders? The most effective muscle growth training app ever made. Get yours now. What can you do with whatever you have to try to address these things? First, Keep learning sports science to learn better tools and tips and techniques for adding size. For example, if the systemic fatigue of squatting 495 gets to be too much, you can use the pre-exhaust method and do some leg presses first and then squat only 315, paying a smaller fraction of the systemic fatigue cost, but getting almost as much or as much muscle growth as before. We can use clever things we learn in sports science to keep the train rolling at least faster than it would otherwise roll. It doesn't fight the asymptote directly, but it definitely gives you a boost. Second, you don't necessarily want to try to gain the same amount of weight you do all the time. Or if you do gain the same amount of weight, that's okay. Don't gain the same amount of percent. So for example, if you say I weigh 150 pounds, I'm going to gain 10% of my body weight. That's going to be 15 pounds. I'm going to see you at 165. Cool. When you're at 165 and you want to do another mass gaining phase, if you do another 10%, that's actually more total weight, but now you can gain less muscle, so a higher proportion of that will be fat. You have two choices at this point. One is to set a smaller goal. So, okay, I got from 150 to 165. Now I'm just going to go from 165 to 170. Then eventually I'm going to go from 170 to like 177, and then 177 to 185, and then 185 to 190. It, slow, it gets a little bit lower every time. Your alternative method is to do the same amount of weight gain or even the same percentage. You just have to understand that you have to slough off more and more and more body fat every time. Your gains will be more disappointing. You'll be more looking more like Michelin Man at the end of your uh, muscle gain phases than uh, Chris Hemsworth from the recent CGI'd out of its mind Thor movie. So that blows, but at the very least, you have a realistic understanding of, look, I'm not getting as much muscle every time. So at the very least, I can do is to set a slightly smaller gain goal, still set a goal, still have a surplus, still gain weight, but not as much weight as before. That's something pretty reasonable. Next, try to add reps and load to your abilities every week, and the abilities to add will reduce over time, so you'll have to be more conservative. Luckily, the ratios take care of this pretty well, so here's how this works. When you're starting to go from 100 pounds in the deadlift to 150, you can add 5 pounds every week. That's a big fraction of 100 pounds. 5 pounds is what, 1 20th of 100, right? When you're going from 300 pounds to 350 pounds much later in your deadlift, 
Don't add seven and a half or 10 pounds or whatever just because, well, fuck, man, I'm three times stronger. Shit, I'm going to add 15 pounds every time. No, 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 because your ability to adapt is less. So now the really cool thing here is you just add five pounds still. The, here's the really the cool kicker. Guys that are squatting six, seven, 800 pounds should be, and usually are, only adding five pounds to the bar every week. And you think, fuck, really? Like you see a guy with seven plates on the fucking squat bar. And next week it's seven plates and a two and a half on each side. You're like, that guy, what? If, what? You just slap on another plate. Uh-uh-uh, motherfucker, that's not how it works. Another plate for him is so much more than his capacity to become stronger. It's just a recipe for injury probability or just crazy fatigue escalation or just not being able to catch up. Like, well, did eight reps last week, three reps this week. Thanks a lot, idiot. Now I can do eight plates, I guess, but why? So you have to just keep adding the same amount of weight, even a lower weight. Go from five pounds to two and a half, whatever your body's capable of to get you a multiple week progression. If you know that adding 15 pounds each time gets you a progress from one and a half weeks and then you fall off, don't do it. And, and a lot of times people do this and they become frustrated. They're like, man, the fuck, bro? I used to be able to add 15 pounds. Shut up right away. Get the fuck out of my face. What the fuck is used to? Them times is gone, motherfucker. That shit's just not, it's not real reality anymore. You know, I used to be able to, you know, I used to be a, a, a top pianist. Maybe people don't know this about me. Um, and I used to be able to play any, any sonata that I wanted, uh, just off memory. And, uh, wow, this is tough. After the crash, I never could play again. But I don't ever think about that stuff because it's in the past. You see, I'm really psychologically with, right? So the shit you used to gain, the gains you used to make, make the gains that are realistic. And if they're offensively small, Go back to the first point in the slide and do better sports science. They'll get a little bit better, but then it'll become offensively small. It's just you streaming to the top of your abilities. It is inevitable that gains will slow down. Accept that reality and realistically program for smaller gains. You used to add a repetition every time in the squat every week. Now you add a rep every other week. It's just a fact of life. If you ignore it, your fatigue will skyrocket. Your probability of injury will go up. You're just slamming yourself into a wall. If you take it in, into heart, into mind, put it in your programming, you're just going to have smooth programming. And people are going to be like, why are you only lifting like five pounds more than last week? Aren't you huge? You'd be like, yes, but because I'm huge, my body's more resistant to growth and five pounds is the only thing I can gain over time. And they're going, oh, that's really smart. And they're going to be like, what are you? Like, what? That's like a lot of science. And you just walk away from them, don't even say anything. Folks, know your limits. And then knowing that, don't get depressed. Push the limits intelligently with proper sports science and a shitload of dedication. And you're not going to get the gains you ideally want. Because ideally, we want to be just giant balloon animal-sized people, I think. You are going to get all the gains that you realistically have got coming to you. That's the ticket, and that's the whole point of this channel. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.